I mean, there are those of us who would just like to see them gone. Uh, but they have, um, first of all, they serve a purpose, a valuable purpose. Um, places like Yad Vashem, Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Memorial in Jerusalem and memorials around the world. And um, in other places where they serve as reminders of this kind of behavior and things that we don't want to see repeated. So from a positive perspective, uh, they serve a very important um, uh, role. Um, in remembering about things like Holocaust. Uh, and we're not the only Holocaust, we just happen to be one of the worst in many respects. Um, so they serve a purpose, and at the same time, I'm somewhat reluctant to simply say, get rid of them, let's pass laws to forbid it, etc., etc. Um, once the cat is out of the bag, if you will, it's really hard to put it back in. And I think that the response to people who will use these things for the wrong reasons or for negative reasons. The only response is to educate people to understand why they should exist, why they, why, what we can learn from them, and what we can do about it. In other words, we have to be prepared to make the arguments and to educate people as to why we don't want to see this happen again. Um, people selling these kinds of paraphernalia, um, there's essentially only two reasons for selling them is that I can think of right off the top of my head. The first is because um, they want to promote hate. And selling these uh, paraphernalia to private individuals and to others who can then sort of share them and talk about them and, and disseminate hateful things, it, it, I think it leads to that. The other possible reason is nothing personal, it's business. So it's for profit, if again, they don't really, they're not anti-Semitic, they don't really care. It's just an item that is in demand and they can make good money on it. Um, I get that. Uh, there is a third, of course, which is both <laughs> hate mm -hmm. and gain, yeah. uh, needless to say. Uh, the only thing I can say about that, in fact, I'll say two things about it. Um, first of all, uh, it's important to bear in mind um, an incident that occurred here in the synagogue a number of years ago when an individual came and spoke to me. Um, and he brought with him pictures of um, Jews who had been murdered in the camps at that time. He was on the Canadian uh, regiment that had gone out there to do cleanup in the concentration camps. And he took pictures because he was very, very concerned that this reality would be lost, diminished, changed, of course, Holocaust deniers, etc. And so he had brought it and uh, he had passed on and he gave them um, to his nephew. It was his nephew who came to see me. I taped the interview, I took the pictures that he gave me, and I asked him, because he'd had them for many years, why after all these years uh, did you bring them to me? And he said over the years he had shown them to individuals, to people, in, to friends who had come over and shared them with him, with them. And on a number of occasions people had offered him money to buy those pictures from him. To the point that the last time it happened someone actually offered him $5,000 to get those pictures. And when he asked them why they would want to spend that kind of money on these kinds of pictures, they're horrible pictures, um, the guy said, well, that's the last thing these Jews need is just another excuse. It was then that he realized that his guarding of those pictures was a bad idea. He came to see me, he gave me what he had, we did this interview, and then I took the interview and the pictures and I sent them to Yad Vashem in Jerusalem where they have now been put into an exhibit. So they're part of an exhibit. So that's a way of taking such a negative thing and turn it into a positive. And I, 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 my heart goes out to that guy and all he's tried to do and the way that he decided to resolve it. So therein is the issue, showing you what could happen and how it can be used for good purposes. Um, and so, you know, to me that, that kind of so, sort of t tells it all. I think that the second part of that um, is that there are those who will use them for positive use, if one can use the word positive in this kind of environment, but for educational purposes. But the majority of people investing in this kind of thing with that kind of money, that's not the purpose. And so when a business decides they, they're going to do that and it's nothing personal, it's just business, I would invite them to read a book called IBM and the Holocaust. Uh, most people don't know that uh, IBM, 
a well-known corporation in business, well today, well, well in business today. Uh, a, a, a IBM were actually supported the Holocaust. They had IBM computerized machines in concentration camps. Uh, they supplied Hitler with the necessary um, means to identify and log and record Jews so they could find them and put them into detention camps. And I have to say, if you read the letter that is recorded in that book, um, if you read the, the letter that from the CEO of IBM at that time to um, the, the Nazi party, to Hitler, etc., um, it's very clear that this guy has no anti-Semitic feelings at all. Nothing personal, it's just business. He was invited to undertake a business undertaking that was financially good for IBM, and he did. And so, to me, that tells us much. We can learn much from it.